Welcome everyone to another edition of the Al Heron Talks podcast. We've got uh, Miss Benita Love in the house, uh, and of course our wonderful producer, Miss Marcella Robles, is here doing her thing. Hey. And we have a couple of special guests today. We get asked a lot of times uh, because of the guests that we have, um, what is it like to be? Because we have a lot of very successful real estate agents who come on the, the program. And they seem to be more established. And so we get a lot of people who want to come into the industry. And they were like, well, I kind of want to know what it would be like for me starting out, but wanting to be successful, right? They don't want to be the agent that kind of washes out, gets started, because there's a lot right. of those stories out there. And I said, well, you know what we're going to do? There's a couple of guys that have really impressed me here at Monument. They're relatively new in the business. And they started new. Uh, one of them did. Uh, and the other had had some experience, but not much, right? And so I've watched them over the last year, and they came in and joined our SEALs program, which is now called Training Camp. Um, and there is a, uh, it's a very strict program, very regimented program, and the, the goal is that they had to close. Uh, I think it's changed now, but I think what was back then, eight points or six points or whatever. There's a point system, mm -hmm. so you have to close a number of transactions uh, to be able to graduate from the program. And the reason uh, it's set up that way is because we want to see if we can get them to close properties in a relatively short period of time because if you can, there's some habits that are formed that allow you to be able to do this on into the rest of your career. And so, um, and both of these gentlemen have graduated from that very tough Yay. program. So, yeah, we want to. <laughs> and so we thought it would be great to have them on. They both have very unique stories. Um, both uh, minority young men, too. You know, we have the, the industry, a lot of, the industry has been really good to, to a lot of women, too. We've had a lot of mm -hmm. very successful women, uh, you know, uh, and but we don't have, we haven't had many guys on. And so I wanted them to kind of see two young guys who are uh, doing their thing in the business. And so we want to welcome both, uh, about to call him Tevin Campbell. He was named <laughs> after Tevin Campbell, but uh, Tevin Rogers uh, is with us. Welcome, Tevin. Thank you, thank you. And then I, Angelo Chavez, and I was about to call <laughs> Are you going to call him? No, because somebody we yeah, know called him Anglo. Oh. Uh, at the office. Oh, like, no. Anglo. I was like, can you get an Anglo? And I look at him. Okay. I like but, Angelo better. Yeah, Angelo. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I think, I don't know that anybody else pronounces it that way. I think that was the first time I ever heard that, too. But yeah, that was, was, that was a new one for you, too. No, 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 no. Oh, she's serious. serious. Yeah, she's serious. Ah. Yeah, she called him. She said, hey, she's Anglo. Serious. What'd you say? Said, hey, just, just, I just laughed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when I heard it, I was like, Angelo, who's she talking to? That's not my Angelo. <laughs> but anyway, Angelo Chavez is here as well. And both of these gentlemen, uh, like I said, are very uh, successful uh, at this business. They're just getting started. And they are um, both went to that program together, and they hold each other accountable. So they're kind of accountability partners and all that good stuff. And so we kind of want to hear the real of this, right? Because a lot yeah. of people – I don't want to get into real estate, and they watch, uh, what's the show? Selling, Selling Sunset. Selling Sunset. It's like, I don't have to watch it anymore. They just watch Instagram. Mm. But that's YouTube. right. <laughs> yeah. YouTube, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. All uh, you see is the flashy. You see the flashy, and, and half of it is not even real, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but And people see that and say, okay, that's what I want to do. I want to get into this business, and, uh, and that's the life I want to live. I want right. to live like this stuff I see on TV. But the reality of it is... That uh, that lifestyle can be earned, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's earned, it's hard mm -hmm. earned, and most people aren't built for that, right? And they get in this business and they wash out, uh, mm -hmm. mainly because they came in with the not the right mindset. So, first of all, we'll start with Tevin. Tevin, uh, Tevin got on his his Lakers stuff, and <laughs> Tevin is not. And I don't and know why, because we're in the playoffs, we're in the finals right now. Got to yeah, represent, you know, LeBron. <laughs> LeBron the GOAT. Player. His favorite player, LeBron. Michael Jordan, number two. Ooh. So we might just cut it short and just <laughs> go to. <laughs> <laughs> we might just interview uh, Angelo and just. just Michael block. Jordan is nice, you know, but LeBron, there's only one. Oh, but LeBron. you were born in 92. That's I was born in 92. Yeah, you're right. I didn't really get to see Michael Jordan. You know, um, I know his, his best years were in the 90s when I was a mm. baby. And so, yeah. you know, it's just like in 10 years, 
a lot of kids are gonna say Steph Curry is the goat. That's the reality of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. They might, <laughs> uh, but the deal is, and quite honestly, you're not really even a Lakers fan. You're a LeBron James. That's true. Fan. And so, which is odd. I don't even know who does that. They, they most I think people, smart people, people with a high IQ. Yeah. Mm. Well. Okay. But I'm most joking. people it takes have. A team. I'm have, joking. Most people have teams that yeah. they support. Well, like, I mean, there's no, there's no. There's not one fan book you can go find in a library where it says, okay, this is how you are a fan. You need to be just a Cowboys fan instead of just being a Dak Prescott fan. Or you need to be just a Patrick Mahomes fan instead of being a Chiefs fan. So you're a LeBron fan. Right. Are you a Lakers fan? If LeBron, Here's the question. If LeBron did not play for the Lakers, would you be a fan of the Lakers? No, I would be a fan of whoever LeBron played for. Okay. Are you a Mavs fan? Yeah, um, you're kind born of, and raised. Kind you of. Born in Dallas? So, and Al knows this because we talk all the time. I'm a big fan of Kyrie and a fan of Luca. I mean, you got two people there. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. If Kyrie were to leave after this year or something like that, I still would like the Mavericks. Even okay. if Luca were to leave, but Kyrie stay, I still would like the Mavericks. So, I don't hate the Mavericks. I just really hate the Cowboys. Oh. Sorry, I know they kind of took a change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not the Cowboys. It's it's mainly the fans of the Cowboys. You know. So Wait, are you from Dallas? Yeah, born and raised. Okay. Oak Cliff first ten years, then Urban for a little while, then Pleasant Grove. Are you a Cowboys fan? No, not at all. Are you from Dallas? No, I'm from New Mexico. Oh. We don't have no You're professional sports teams though. So yeah, all my places are a little bit everywhere. Same. But you Same. became fans of it. So Angelo is a, a legit fan. You're you're Oakland now, L.A. Yeah. Yeah, in Las Vegas, right? That's yeah. right, yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, and you were with them from, you know, from back then. Now they're the yeah. Vegas Raiders okay. and still your squad. This is West right? Coast, okay. Do you have a favorite basketball team? <laughs> I did. You did? You did. Okay, see. Okay. okay. But, what happened? But I, so the thing with basketball is I was actually similar. I was OKC okay, when it was Westbrook and KD because that was the only game I ever watched. Mm-hmm. And then now nobody on OKC that I really watch anymore gotcha. so I'm kind of gotcha. I don't I don't really watch basketball as much I joked about uh my trade request to the Mavs but nobody signed it off yet so your trade oh to become to, a to become, become a, a Mavs, Mavs fan. Fan. you're welcome oh you can I was like trade cool. request. wait so I'm not <laughs> welcome <laughs> I'm not no, welcome. Not really. <laughs> wow. Because no, I don't like the way you do your <laughs> fandoms. Wow. I don't, I don't like the way you're saying, no, you're not, no. So you can watch, you can cheer for them, but you're not a Mavericks <laughs> fan. Wow. So, okay. Right. That's cool. Stick with LeBron. I'm a Rangers fan because I don't really know much about baseball, so I'll just <laughs> stick with the home team. <laughs> now you want to stick with the home team? <laughs> yeah, well, I know after, a lot about after football. They win, a world series. they win a World Series. Now, <laughs> right you're, now. You're on no, the no, no, I've been, I've been a quote-unquote Rangers <laughs> fan. I just don't really care about baseball too yeah. much. But I played basketball and football, so I know a lot about those two sports. And I know what great is and what mediocrity is, especially when it comes to the Cowboys. So you play ba- – what, what <laughs> position did, huh? did you play? <laughs> well, you play sports. And so, yeah. y'all, if y'all looking at the camera angle, if you're watching this oh. on YouTube versus just listening, you're probably like, okay, he played. Yeah, so hey, let's, man. Let's, what, you play basketball? I, right. I'm assuming point guard. Oh, yeah, like point, point guard, guard yeah. 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 Point guard. Point guard and then in football, of course, receiver. I did punt return, of kick course return. Receiver. Yeah, <laughs> of course, receiver. I mean, look, look, I'm not – I'm not ashamed of my size or anything, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure you play lineman, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's, you know, I, now I will say this. I was pretty good at, at playing sports, you know. Okay. The only reason why I stopped is because the reality is, is I said my senior year in high school, I was like, look, the reality is I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get bigger. I can get, you know, more mass, but I'm not going to get taller, so I'm not going to make it to the NBA or the NFL. Do you mind if I ask how tall are you? Uh, five, 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 six on a good day. <laughs> Depending on the shoes, you know. Hey, but Kevin Hart is successful, you know. He, I yeah, think he's shorter I don't than think me. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Prince. my wife's shorter than me. That's all that matters. Yeah. Exactly. Prince was only what? Five? I don't know. Four? Five? Is Prince he that, that short? short? I thought he was like maybe five, six. No, nah, he had a lot of. He did wear. Well, I'll tell y'all this: most, most entertainment artists you know i used to do music like a Lil wayne or play sure. people like that uh, they they're usually sure. like five 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 when I meet, six yeah when i've met some celebrities in person i'm like Lil boosie hmm. I, I seen him we we're out in miami about two years ago we walked right past him we didn't even know we just seen a lot of security and i'm talking he was this close that me and angelo are and uh he was maybe an inch taller than me maybe wow really? but yeah. you know the average i think the average height for men is like five nine maybe in uh yeah five eight five nine in america oh, you trying to I'm just saying it's five eight. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm five eight and a half. Oh, 
uh-huh. almost five and a half. If I have the right shoes on, I'm five. Yeah, that's nine. what I'm saying. Like it depends on the shoes I'm wearing. To well, answer but, your question, but I don't have to wear pumps to do it. I mean, I can. Yeah, wear I don't have to wear pumps. <laughs> now I may have to wear some hot top forces. You know, it gives a two inches. You know. <laughs> we just give you a hard time, Tevin. We, I, I like messing with Tevin. He's got a great sense of humor. He can he can handle it. Uh, I just don't like the way he does his fandom stuff. He's a he's a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Patrick not, Mahomes. No, I'm sorry. He's not Patrick, a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Yeah. He's a Patrick okay. Mahomes fan. There we go. There we go. So if Patrick okay. Mahomes leaves the Chiefs tomorrow. And hold on. And Lamar Jackson. You know that I talk yeah, about right. him just right, as much. Right, right. But okay. Anyway, it's ridiculous. I don't know who does this. Who who does it? You can like all these players, right? I I got a lot of players I like. But yeah. No, not, I, I don't even want to talk about it. It's frustrating. Okay. So let's move on from that. So very good. So tell us about your your prior to becoming into real estate. What what were you doing before real estate? What made you decide to go into real estate and what was that transition like? Yeah, so I was in banking for all of my twenties. Uh graduated from the Uni- University of North Texas out in uh twenty fifteen. But I was already in banking part time. So once I graduated, got in investments for like a year or two, went back to banking because I'm more of an in person guy because of my personality instead of being on the phone. Uh moved my way up pretty quick to management and during that time you know when you're a banker or bank manager you're always looking at clients uh income that they have you can see all of their accounts so there's a lot of people coming in and seeing all this money and specifically people that were in real estate and it was always my dream the quote-unquote american dream to become my own business owner i just didn't know in what so uh probably around like maybe 27 no 26 i had the idea of real estate uh, but I didn't know much of anything because I didn't have anybody in my family that did real estate. So finally, I got the courses. I don't know if I shared this with you, but I actually purchased the courses for about six, seven hundred dollars, put them in my trunk, and they stayed in my trunk for about two years. Yeah, from the age of 26 to maybe 28. And then finally, 28 hit, which is about four years ago now. Um, I finally made a decision that I wanted to get in real estate. So I'm more of a thinker before I make a big time decision. So I just picked a lot of of my clients, brains, investors, appraisers, you know, all type of people that were in real estate, real estate agents, brokers, picked their brain and said, hey, what is the direction you recommend I go? Then I just started to study YouTube like crazy, um, uh, a few channels that I really love. And then after that, finally in 2022, I finally said, okay, I'm going to get the courses again because the other courses expired. <laughs> I got the courses again. And, and so when they expire, after you spend all that money, do you have to spend the money all over again or are you able to kind of just? Well, I probably could have. I don't know the answer to that because I probably could have used those same courses, but they were all books. I was going to say, what, what were they? Like, yeah, books? Uh, yeah, they were books. That's why I said they were in my trunk. Okay. So, um, so what ended up happening in 2022 when I for sure was serious and made that decision I actually uh, picked a few people's brain that was currently in real estate, and they told me about a digital online course, which you don't have hard copy books. It's mm-hmm. just a lot of videos and things right. like that. And I said, man, we're in 2022. I think I'm, I can you know, do that better. So I went out and spent an additional six, $700, and, um, and I got serious. And during that year, I did a lot of networking events. I did a lot of – it was a, a lot of calling off of work early or maybe going in late – because I was quote unquote sick or my daughter was sick and really I was going to like a networking event for real estate just to educate myself and really put myself in the industry and um, building a lot of relationships and uh, doing a lot of studying on YouTube and then finally once I got my license I wanted to do part-time real estate and banking but since I was a branch manager and we did home equity loans and we did personal loans and lines of credit I actually asked my manager I said hey what if someone <laughs> wanted to do real estate and do what we do? Is that possible? I'm just curious. And he didn't even really think that that was me because I was so good at my job. He thought I was going to be there for the next maybe decade. And he was like, well, you can't because it's a conflict of interest because you're kind of playing mm-hmm. both sides. And I said, okay, got you. About two months later, got my license. As soon as I got my license, I put in my two weeks notice and then went full-time real estate. Oh, gotcha. Wow. Okay. But let me ask this. Did you not think about going into mortgage since you already worked in the bank? Yeah, um, around 27, 28, I picked a lot of ELO's uh, brains just to kind of see how that went. And the only reason why I didn't do mortgage is because I could be wrong. So quote me on this if I am. But a lot of mortgage loan officers is not as much customer facing. You know, you use a mm-hmm. phone call here and there, but then you're doing a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm. I'm not really a big numbers guy. 
right? Even though I was in banking, the part of banking I was in, it wasn't really a lot of numbers. Um, so that's the main reason why I didn't do that. That was my first option, to be quite honest. But then I said, okay, real estate, it's a lot of shaking hands, a lot of phone. It's a mixture of practically everything, but it's mm -hmm. not really a lot of anything, if that makes sense. So, so I said, okay, cool. I think a realtor would be more suitable for my personality as opposed to just stand in the office all day. Okay. And the, and the big thing about choosing to go into real estate though, what was it that you really wanted to accomplish? You just like the field of real estate. I know you said you picked up the brains of a bunch of people, but and you saw the income that a lot of the real estate agents you had as customers had coming in. But what was it you just your personality you thought fit that career? Yeah, my skill set, my personality. Cause in banking, it's kind of being a Nah, it's not like a, being a realtor, but on a smaller scale, it's still sales. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have to do cold calling. Mm -hmm. You still have to uh, nurture nurture clients, have a follow-up game plan, a database, all these same things. So that's why I was like, well, whatever my business is in, I remember talking to my wife and I said, whatever my business is in, it has to be something that my current skill set can easily translate into. Okay. Um, and then most importantly is around that same time, I was in, uh, I don't know if we can say names, but I was in Amway. I don't know if y'all heard of Amway. Mm -hmm. And they were, they're, they're big on digital marketing and things like that, but they're big on personal development. So they got me to start reading books current, constantly. They got me to start listening to positive audios and podcasts and make sure I go to conferences with personal development. So at that time, I started being a lot of, around a lot of wealthy people. Mm -hmm. And as I was studying them, along with studying real estate, I was like, well, one thing that everybody has in common that's wealthy in this country is they do something with real estate, mm -hmm. whether if it's as an investor, wholesaler, it doesn't matter. So I said, well, why not get into that industry? Because even if I'm only a realtor for a year, which I don't plan on being a realtor just for a year, but, but I said, even if I'm only a realtor for a year, I now know nuances. So maybe I can go ahead and own a few investment properties and things like that. So that was probably the biggest why on why I got in is because once again, practically every wealthy person out there does something with real estate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good point. So Angelo, what was your story? So I know you uh, actually had before coming to monument, you actually had been in the industry, but not here in the Metroplex. I did. Yeah, it was here in the Metroplex. Okay. I, I had one company before, so I, I had, a, I had a sales background before this. So I was going to school and then COVID hit. I lost all my financial aid, all that stuff. And then I just didn't know where I was going to go. So then I ended up, my brother worked sales for a furniture company in Oklahoma. So then I ended up moving out there. My option was either start sales or go back to school. And I decided to start sales. Uh, so I took that route and I did that for like about a year and a half, two years. That company ended up moving me and my brother off to Lubbock. I was going to run like a location for them in Lubbock. So he was going to be there for a year. He was going to move to Cali and then I was going to take it over. So I did that. And while I was out there, I was actually, I wanted to just get into real estate investing. That's where it kind of started for me. And I kind of just got this little bug, started researching it, all that stuff. I enjoyed sales. But then I had met a guy who was actually a realtor, came in and had bought something from the furniture store, right? And told me on it he was like you you enjoy what you love now but the the difference with this is it's not it's not full freedom you still are stuck here right. between nine to five right you're stuck between these four walls from nine to five so that was kind of the first thing that caused me to question it uh he kind of walked me through getting my license and I was still in Lubbock so he walked me through getting my license during that time I actually took my vacation time so I had five days of a uh, PTO and I took five days off to take my hybrid courses. So those five days I went to the real estate class. I got my license that happened October of 21. And then I just didn't, I just didn't do nothing with it. So I, j I had my license, did nothing with it. It just sat there. So you had the like, did you even join a brokerage? No, no, I was, like, no, just, okay. I, I, was I was in Lubbock. I was interviewing brokerages, right. but I never took the step because mm -hmm. I just the, the guy that had got me into it. They, they kind of stopped reaching out to me and all that stuff. They got busy, whatever. So I just I was interviewing Keller Williams and all these other ones out in Lubbock. And then I actually ended up. It's kind of funny. I ended up losing my job in uh, 
Lubbock. And okay. I, I had a disagreement <laughs> with the like regional manager, so I lost my job in Lubbock. Right? You had a disagreement. I, I like the way you. I like the way you put <laughs> it. Like, you had a good job. Because yeah. if I remember correctly, it sounded like you were going out there and you're going to take over from your 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 brother, right? Yeah. And so I wondered how we get to that to what was a disagreement. The disagreement? It, it was just a mess over to. just just some of the politics of mm. like the sales and stuff and then the direction my brother was going in and then the the role that they wanted me to be in it wasn't like a fit that I wanted to do, right? So this disagreement came up and I kind of I didn't understand like the I guess rights and stuff when it comes to working. So I was kind of like backed in a corner. They kind of gave me an option either to go back to the first company that I was with in Oklahoma city or to just kind of quit. And I, I quit. I didn't, I didn't know. I just quit. So while I quit you were in Lubbock while I was in Lubbock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I quit while I was in Lubbock and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I, uh, had my license. I had two options. I moved back home. Um, I had enough saved you said up back home, home to, to New, New Mexico. Mexico. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I moved back home to New Mexico, and I was out there for like two months trying to figure out what I was going to do. My my options were I was either going to move back to OKC and go back into sales, or I was going to move out to Dallas. I had had one friend and an ex girlfriend out here, and mm -hmm. <laughs> that ended mm -hmm. up being my reason for moving out here. Right? Was it more the friend or the ex girlfriend? A little bit of both. More the friend though. <laughs> okay. My friend, my my friend was. Uh, my friend was, he was constantly trying to get me to move out here. I took trips to Dallas while I was out here. I just never fully kind of jumped into it. So during that, I had decided that I was going to move to Dallas and start real estate. So that was the decision I came to. I moved out here and I actually burnt up all the money that I had. I had, it's <laughs> funny, it's that, it's that funny story of like, oh, I had $700 in credit cards. It's literally how it was for me. So oh, that I burnt, take long at all, burnt all my savings. <laughs> yeah, I burnt all my <laughs> savings. I went 700 in debt. And I was just like, I'm just going to jump into real estate. I'm going to be good. That's how I'm going to do it. And then I realized how expensive it is <laughs> to start in real estate. Right, right. So I was out here. I was out here for about two weeks. And I was like, nah, I got to do something. So my friend that was out here, I met in Oklahoma City. He was in sales. So he worked for the company out here. I actually started. He worked for the company that you were in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Okay. We met in Oklahoma. And then he moved out here to work for, it was Ashley. So okay. Oklahoma City, it's Mathis Brothers, but they also own Ashley's like in different areas. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. So this was a different franchise, but the same company. Mm -hmm. But he worked for Ashley out here. And he was like, yeah, I'll get you on. Just start with that. We'll start with that. So yeah. I, I started with sales out here for like my first six months, I think. Um, still didn't jump into real estate, interviewed brokerages. I had met an old lady that I was selling a couch to that her bowling partner was a realtor. <laughs> you met an old lady. An old lady. You're selling a couch <laughs> to a couch. bowling partner. <laughs> bowling partner was a realtor. <laughs> and that's how you chose <laughs> your first <laughs> brother. That's how I chose my first brother. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so I was interviewing a couple, right? I interviewed okay. a couple out here. I, I, I did your, your your main ones, right? Right, right. And then I came across this one, and uh, I, I scheduled the interview with the guy. And uh, Which my, one? The one that I went to. You came across what one? You talking about which brokerage? Yeah, you talking the about the, the one, the bowling the, lady, the bowling right. lady. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the brokerage that I ended up going with. But it was it was. I don't, do we throw names? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 No <laughs> You're not sponsored. <laughs> <Yeah>. It was uh, <laughs> Next Home, so I went with a company called okay. Next Home. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. It's a smaller brokerage. That's my brokerage in Mississippi. Really? Yeah. They so <laughs> I actually I I didn't know this, but now I know this. All the people, John, Jen, Johnny, Jen, uh, a lot of them, they all worked with Halo Group, I guess. That they used right, to be part right, of oh, okay. right. This brokerage was mainly that Halo Group kind of crew. I didn't know that at okay. the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, this guy that I had met, he uh, introduced me to the guy that was mentoring me and taking me under his wing. He caught my eye because he was investing, and that was his thing, and that was what kind of caught my attention with real estate. And... He kind of, he was just a genuine dude. So ended up joining them uh, and I was with them for a year about, I would say. Um, I, my mentor was really good. He helped me out. They, their goal was only like two deals in a year, right? Mm -hmm. So once I two closed. Two deals a year? Once I, yeah, once I closed two deals in a year, I was out of the mentor thing and then I just kind of oh, navigate my whole way. <laughs> so it was a little, it was a little interesting. I, uh, I did end up getting two deals that year, I got one that was like this random company lead that came in through our website. 
and the uh, broker was actually calling everybody. Nobody answered. I happened to be the one that picked it up. And as an investor, as an Airbnb investor, it was a fun, fun search okay. for my first deal. So I did that, and that was my first deal. And then my second one was uh, open house lead. Okay. So I got an open house lead, and then from there, I realized I was missing something in my brokerage. So I realized that they taught me all the basics for the most part, but what I was missing was the lead genning part. A lot of these people had been in the industry 10, 12, 14 years and couldn't really walk me through the steps of like getting into it, generating your own leads and that stuff, right? So from there, actually, I thought it'd be easier to go apartment locating. So I said, let me go apartment locating. I'm younger. Everyone's getting into apartments. That'll be easier. Then I realized it's hard to collect a check apartment mm -hmm. locating. And I went there and I sat there for six months because I didn't want to switch to my third brokerage that soon. And uh, I actually ended up, my first mentor actually knew somebody from Monument and he was like, I think you should join Monument. They have a really good sales program, uh, seals program, right? Their seals program is really good. Uh, and I think it's great for newer agents. He said, I met a top producer and she's with Monument and she went through seals and she credits everything to seals. So I was like, okay. And then I interviewed and so I ended up here. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And so what's cool about it is so Tevin, when he was, you know, Tevin, your your brokerage situation, because you had actually signed. Wait, hadn't, had you just always signed with Century 21? What was the deal? Yeah, so I actually signed with Century 21, Mike Bowman, out in Grand Prairie. Or great, 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 great Vine. Great office, good yeah. people. What made like you that. um choose them, or how did you find out about them? Um, So one thing about me, man, if I need the, a question answered, I'm asking everybody. I don't really care, because the worst thing they can do is ignore me or say no. So I actually went on... um. When I was about a month out from getting my license, I went on LinkedIn and I went on Facebook and just added a whole bunch of people. I typed in Dallas real estate agent on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and also on Facebook and just add, 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 add. And a lot of people was adding me. But then finally, uh, about a month later, I just DM'd practically about 20 people that looked like they were top agents, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Um, and I just said, hey. Bonita, nice to meet you. My name is Tevin. I'm in uh, real estate school. I should be graduating in about a month and a half. I'm looking up brokerages. Uh, who do you, Can I pick your brain for about five or ten minutes? Here's my phone number. Some people ignored me. Some people did reach out and tell me advice. But then it was just one lady. Um, her name is um, Mary Bell. She's with Century 21, Mike Bowman. I always talk to her and give her credit. She's a top producing agent. Reached back out to me and and we spoke on the phone for like 30 minutes. And she was like, look, I don't care who you join with, but based on our conversation that you look like you'll be a great fit here. I end up going to about, I interviewed with six, seven different brokers and they were my first one I interviewed with cause they're right by my house. And, um, and I fell in love with them. I stayed, I was there for about three hours. I did the interview and then they also had a monthly meeting. I ended up staying with them. Now I will say, um, the environment <clears throat> for better or worse, it was, um, an older culture. Mm -hmm. I would say a lot of 10, 15, 20 years been in real estate and I thought my first mindset was, man, I can learn a lot from these people. Mm -hmm. But then um, I had at this time I had already left my job. So I told them, I said, I'll sign with you. I signed all the paperwork, did the headshot and all that. I had everything set up, but I told them, but I do not want to start for another two weeks. And the reason why is because I was so focused on banking. I was pretty successful at banking and I was just going, going, going. So when I left banking, I said, give me two weeks of just let me just decompress. Mm -hmm. So I was chilling, really, just at the house with my family. And then a, a young lady by the name of April, I know her boyfriend because we used to be uh, super cool working at the bank together. I told him about me getting into real estate. He was like, oh, my girlfriend is with a brokerage called Monument. So I ended up talking to his girlfriend. And she knew that I was on my little two-week stint before I got into real estate. And she was like, honestly, why don't you join Monument? And I said, man, mm -hmm. they just in Frisco. I don't want to go to Frisco. It's about an hour from me. So finally, uh, she said, I think they got an office out in Arlington, which which is where you're at. And I was like, well, I can't find it online, you know. So so I went on and just said, okay, cool. I don't have to always go to the office. I can work at a Starbucks or my house or something. So on my little mini vacation, went to Monument. And, man, I fell in love with it. They patched me in with Britt, who's one of the recruiters. She talked to me a little bit. Uh, went to one of the monthly meetings, even though I wasn't with Monument yet. And uh, just the energy talking like the energy really had me like wow this is where i want to be you know it's a lot of people 
that are around my age, a little bit younger, a little bit older, or my exact age. And and that's really why I said I wanted to start my uh, my real estate journey with. So I was supposed to start with Century 21 on a Monday, right? So on uh, I did the SEALs interview maybe that past Monday. Mel, which is one of the SEALs instructors, got back with me on like that Wednesday and said, you've been accepted. So I had a choice to make. I'm already with Century 21, but do I join Monument? And then I prayed on it, talked to my wife, talked to my mom. Everybody was like, man, it feels like you're going towards the monument, so just do that. But I didn't make my decision until that Friday. So it's one business day before I'm supposed to start with Century 21. And I just, uh, I said, you know what, forget it. Drop my kids off at school. And before I drove off, I typed up an email, sent it to Century 21, went and trick, you know, did all that good stuff so I can kind of uh, take my license from there. And then uh, they ignored me. <laughs> And then I told the mail and seals that I'm going to join them. And uh, the fun fact is uh, about six months in, I had a few deals under me, and uh, and they reached out. I was like, hey, how's everything going? I ignored them because I was like, oh, <laughs> no, nah, man. Like, you know, I mean, no no hard feelings, but it's just yeah. at the end of the day, I'm happy where I'm at, you know. Yeah. And so here's the thing, too. So, and I, I, I really like I know the people at Central New York. Yeah, they're good people. So real good people, real good brokerage. And so I always tell people that – <clears throat> different personalities, different mm -hmm. different fits, right? And so you gotta find out where you fit mm -hmm. best. With you being younger, uh, you know, what you just turned thirty two. Yeah, I just turned thirty two last month. Thirty two, and then Angelo is just twenty four. So, <laughs> you know, we monument does skew younger, and so I I think the energy there uh, that you felt at that meeting, you felt a lot of people who were trying to who were striving, trying to do what you're trying to do. And it felt like I can go do this with them because we're all in about the same same group. The cool thing is, though, it, not only do we have the, the young, we have some more real veterans, mature people who have actually done something in this business. And uh, and so you're able to get the the help from, from them as well. So you got – experienced folks you got some new people and you got you know people who are coming from other companies here who were already very successful but found this to be a better place for what they're doing so you have a full spectrum of folks that you can actually especially somebody like you sound like you pick everybody's brain before you do anything and like 500 people you got to talk to before <laughs> nah, you make a, nah. make a move just, people <laughs> people that i respect right, that i value their right. opinion i'll just give you a hard time but <laughs> but you do know you you do and angela knows this because he knows you but you, you do like to you know, you investigate, you talk to, yeah. and you 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 do your research. I'm never I'm never someone that's just going to jump into something because I feel like you do need to take risk in life, but at the same time, you need to take calculated risk and don't overthink it. It's it's a, it's a really a, a you got to walk the fence of <laughs> overthinking, <laughs> of overthinking and not overthinking because you know, like for instance, I'll go pick three people's brain. I'm not picking twenty. But those three people, I really value their opinion, like before I hired a coach. You know, right. I only pick really just three people's brain, and then I, boom, made my decision. Right, right. And, that's, and that's good. And, and overthinking is a, you know, that, that happens, right? And so even if we think we don't overthink, sometimes we, we overthink, right? Yeah. And so it's something we are constantly working on and getting better at. But it's, it's the, the cautiousness is a good thing. Right? You do want to be – you'd rather be cautious and not screw up. And reckless. Than, absolutely. Especially absolutely. in real Especially, estate. Yeah, you'll get sued in real estate, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You so. know, my motto is, hey, as long as I don't get sued, I'm okay, you know. I'm, I'm not – I will say <laughs> Al and I was talking about this the other day, and I think he agrees that I'm not – now that I've been doing this for a little over a year, I'm not nearly as cautious as I, as I was I think yeah. a lot of that came from because it was such a new industry mm -hmm. and environment that I didn't want to mess up. Now, I still deal with new things every day, but at the same time, I know that, well, like you I have said, a little bit I'm, more experience, you're more confident. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I won't get sued on this. Yeah. So, worst case, I always say, what's the worst case that can happen? Mm -hmm. You know, and if the worst case is they just say no, then I'm going to go for it and I'll learn in the doing, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so tell me this, though, and this is kind of a. Uh, uh, you know, the way Monument does things, too. So there are a lot of people who say, I want to go to Monument, but then they find out, well, no, we, we, we look for full-time agents. And so some people are like, look, I'm not going to quit my job and go try to do this. But you have a pretty strong opinion on how somebody needs to get in this versus trying to kind of ease in part-time or jump all the way in and go full-time. And so what is your... If if someone came to you and said, "Hey, Tevin, 
I want to pick your brain. I've already talked to 700 other people, but I want to talk to you now since you're a LeBron James fan. <laughs> what What do you think I should cool. do? I want to go into to real estate, but I, I have this job, and so I kind of want to do it part-time. Uh, but I do have some savings, and I can get in it full-time. What's your suggestion to me? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is how bad do you want it? And the reason why I say that is because even if you're part time, you're technically still full time. And I and I need to know a little bit more of that person. Like, do you have a wife? Do you have kids? Uh, what are your obligations? If they're comfortable with telling me, because if they're like Angelo and they're 24, no wife, no kids or anything, I'm just going to say, man, I mean, don't make any excuses. Go all in. Now, if they do have wife and kids and maybe a very, very stable job with great benefits, then maybe that's a little different. But ultimately, man, this this industry, whatever you're seeing online, whatever, you know, if you got a every what do they say? Every person knows how many realtors, like five, ten realtors. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. Right. Mm-hmm. So you can pick your friends brains that are realtors. But in my opinion, you don't really know anything. You know, t- School doesn't really teach you. You don't really know anything until you get into the industry and you start doing it. So I would say, how bad do you really want it and what do you want out of this industry? Because if you come to me and you say, which I do have agents still come to me, <laughs> and if you say, well, I want to close, uh, I want to make 100000 this first year and I want to close 10 deals, and then I'm going to say, okay, um, well, what I recommend is that you go all in full time as long as you can pay your bills, right? Because you're probably not going to get a deal maybe the first few months, depending on your situation, because you do have to build the skill and it is a numbers game. But when it comes down to it is is you do have to be realistic, understanding that there could be a time where you have four deals, which is netting you 80K. And then I'll talk to you a month later and you say, I only closed one of those deals. So you you have to go in with the mindset of um, of I have to work, have a how hard, however hard I think I need to work. I need to times that by two or three if you really want to be successful. But once again, it depends on what you want out of this industry because, um, you know, Angelo and I, we're best friends, but there are, he doesn't want some certain things I want. I don't want certain things that he wants. So I can only really speak on depending on what that specific person wants. Right. But uh, I guess where I was really trying to get you to go because of a conversation we've had too, that you've talked to some people who are in it and they their concern that they're not as – far down the road as you are or Angelo, they've not closed those kind of transactions. And, and the comment or at least the thought that you had was that, yeah, they haven't done it because they've, they're not truly all the way in. Yeah. I mean, it's the old saying and cor- quote me if I'm wrong. What is it? Uh, is that burn, the phrase burn. is quote me if I'm wrong, the proper phrase? I mean, Cause correct I shouldn't me. quote you. Okay. I'll, right. Correct me if I'm well, wrong. Now but, I was going to call you. But, but what is no, it? No, uh, no, I just I wanted to make sure. Cause I was like, maybe, this. yeah, don't quote no, me. That's that's I think that's, that's what maybe that's what yeah, it is. Thank you, man. You know, thank you. He did say quote me if I'm wrong. And that's what made me. I kind of like that one though. See, you might as well use that You won't quote me if I'm wrong. You want He's like, he's like, I may be, what did you said earlier? You were like, I may be wrong, but quote me if I, but quote me if I'm wrong. Yeah. My bad. My bad. It's know. almost like keep him accountable. That's that, that's that's I, that, that's that's that South Dallas lingo. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but all jokes aside <laughs> is that it's the old saying, um, which is um, to take the island, you got to burn the ship. So if you want to really, really, really maximize your potential, then you need to put yourself in a position where you're either going to sink or swim. And that's what I used to tell my business clients when I was in banking. They, I, Every quarter, once a quarter, I had one business client coming into my office and Tevin, you know my business. I've been banking with you for two or three years. Do you think I should do full-time or should I keep this job and have a business on the side? It was the same answer every time. I used to always say, well, you'll never truly know your fullest potential unless you go all in. Even these, some of these people were making 100 k with that business. But once again, there's so much more potential you can tap into if you're 100% breathing real mm-hmm. estate. So a lot of those people you're talking about, one thing I noticed they all had in common, common which is what it, you and I spoke on, is a lot of the people, a lot of the relatively new real estate agents, they don't have that success because they either have a husband or a wife that is very financially stable. So they probably don't really need the money. They don't need the deals to close. Or they probably have a job or a business on the side that nets them a good amount of money also. So it's not a necessity. So if you don't come from a place of scarcity, 
then a lot of times you're not really going to maximize your potential. You know, so with me, yes, I had savings coming in, but the reality is, is I needed to close a deal within the first three to four months or I'm out of savings. Yeah, yeah, I could go back to the bank and make six figures, but I didn't want that. So I kept telling myself in my head, well, I don't want to go back to banking. I made it seem as if that that was not a, a choice. So every day I'm grinding, every day I'm hustling, every day I'm adjusting how I do things instead of having a nine to five mindset. Now I got to work seven days a week, which was wild for, to me. You're talking about a decade straight of just five days a week. So I had to adjust the way I think, the way I walk, the way I talk, uh, who I hang around with because I wanted to hang around winners. That's another thing I tell new agents mm -hmm. is your environment matters. If you're hanging around, we got high interest rates right now, the settlement coming up. <laughs> if you're hanging around with agents that are only complaining every time you talk to them and talking about the high interest rates and, you know, I can't find the right house because the inventory is low and things like that. Or there's so many listings that are going into council status because now they're, they're overpriced. I don't want to hear all that. All I want to hear about is what is the solution that we can do? So if you're willing to surround yourself with people in that nature, then you're going to notice that the market really doesn't have a lot to do with you. You need to be aware, but you can still be successful. And I, I came in knowing that the statistic <clears throat> is what, like maybe 80, 80 to 90 percent of agents, you know, uh, flame out in the first two years. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, let's get it. Th that's all that I mean. Uh, that's all that I need, because I go home every day and look at my three daughters and I look at my wife and uh, my wife is talking about a vacation and I'm like, well, I got to pay for that. <laughs> or my or I'm thinking my, my daughters are going to be teenagers in the next decade. So I need to be able to create a legacy for them. So that's all that it is. It's, it's all about how bad do you want it? And once you know how bad you want it and you know what you want out of this industry, because I know some agents that they legit only want to close two or three deals a year. But once again, those agents most likely have a husband or a wife or a business that is netting a good amount of money. I've never met an agent that is full, 100 percent full time and they don't have a financial backing such as like a big savings or a husband or wife or business that's netting the amount of money. Though, ironically, those agents like myself are usually typically the highest working and highest producing agents. Because you're coming from a mindset of scarcity because you're like, well, I need to be working on. We're in June right now, June 2024. Mm -hmm. I was telling Angelo and Al, I was like, I'm already thinking about July, August, September, November. Oh, yeah. That's where my mind is at right now because at the end of the day, you need to constantly think as if you're an entrepreneur. And this industry is so rewarding when we have agents like my recruiter, Britt, who I think last year in December made over 300 k like, that's insane to me. And I instead of me getting jealous of that or instead of me saying, oh, no, I'd never hit that, I'm saying, why can't I hit that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the, the deal is there's there's evidence that can be done. So if you've got somebody who's doing that, unless there's something about you that makes you uh, uh, unable to do the same, which there shouldn't be, then that's something that's attainable for you, too. You could do that as well. And so, Angela, what is your thought on that, too? So you, to get in that program, to, when you all joined SEALs, you had to commit to being full-time agents and going right at this thing. And here you are. You have already you were successful in sales, yeah. right? And uh, But I, I'm assuming you didn't have a big nest egg sitting there to, to go do something. <laughs> so, But you decided to go jump in like this as well. So what was your mindset uh, about just kind of jumping in and sink or swim. I'm a, I'm a little more stubborn, so I kind of have to make the mistakes and then kind of dig myself out of the hole a lot of the time. Um, with my first brokerage, I actually tried the part-time thing, and I quickly realized that, like, this industry is way too demanding to be able to do that. I, I was working for the start of that uh, company that I worked for. I was working sales during the day, and then I was trying to do showings in the afternoons, and then you know, sales. So sometimes I can get on my laptop and do things real quick, but I started to realize like, there's no way I was too stressed out. I was getting burnt out. It was hard. So it was honestly, I had to kind of just make the decision to jump into it full time. I think I had a really big learning lesson for me before I joined Monument was when I went apartment locating, I made no money for like six months. So I completely was having to do Uber, Lyft, anything I could just to kind of mm -hmm. like stay afloat, right? The hardest part for that was I could very easily go back to my old job and make the same money that I was making. But it was, 
I knew the I knew the potential of real estate when I got into it. My thought process when I jumped into this is even if I don't see immediate success, I know that if I make 30k my first year, 60k my second year, 120 my third year, 240 mm-hmm. my fourth year, 500k my fifth year. So I knew the long-term vision of it, right? So that's kind of what I had bid on to and uh I actually this I, you mentioned about me and Tevin being so close and that being an important thing. I've seen Tevin at his lowest. He's seen me at my lowest, right? When I first joined SEALs, I went 10K in debt. I was getting late notices on my rent, and it, I just kept sticking it out because I knew eventually it was going to hit. I knew mm-hmm. eventually the work was going to click through and it was going to show, and it did. It did, and it it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of, you know, just digging and fighting and fighting and being upset, but it helps to just have people around you that have done it because you have that clear vision that it's possible. Right. And so, so. and then when it hit, it hit. I noticed yeah. you had a you had a million dollar month. I mean you yeah. like it but multiple it, times. It, right. Multiple mm. times. Correct. And so it's not a situation to where the the problem for a lot of agents a lot of them have great potential and we're like, this person's gonna be really good. And then we look up and they're not here anymore. Yeah. It's because not everybody is built to stay focused on the end goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So temporary setbacks or temporary conditions cause them to lose out on more permanent success. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that this is too hard right now. I can't do this. I can't I can't handle this. So I'm out. Yeah. And if they just stuck it out just a little bit mm-hmm. longer. That yeah. property would have gone on the contract. You would have had that closing. Those that pe- that couple you close has all these friends that are gonna show up at the that the housewarming party who need to buy a house. And yeah. now it rolls like that. But a lot of people won't stay in enough to get the momentum. It's a momentum yeah. thing. Yes. And the other issue now, both of you are very very successful. You got graduated from the program inside of a year. So obviously you close you had closed seven deals or whatever it was and. That's already more than most seasoned agents close in a year. And so y'all are new agents doing that. The problem that happens there is a lot of agents, once they see some success, they want to go start living like the people on mm-hmm. Selling Sunset. <laughs> now they so that, now I want to go to, yeah, now I want to go do all the yeah. the stuff I want to flex and then <laughs> forget about doing the stuff that got them there. Yeah. And next thing you know, Mm. Uh, shoot, I can't pay my bills. So I'm like, right. hey, I'm, 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 where'd all the money go? Yeah, and it's always harder to climb back up the hill mm-hmm. than to keep moving up the hill, right? So the moment you lose momentum and slide back, that journey back up is hard. So the deal is keep moving yeah. forward, and that's what a lot of people want to start enjoy. You can enjoy the success, mm-hmm. but don't let that be. That's not. You're working for something bigger than that 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 immediate success, yeah. and so how do y'all fight against that? Because I know that's a, that's got to be a temptation, right? You start making more million dollar month, thirty grand. I mean, that's that doesn't normally come in like that for most people. We make thirty thousand dollars a month. Yeah, they yeah. get that and they're like, oh, okay, and they forget. <laughs> I think for me, I think it's. I, I don't really have like a lavish lifestyle or anything like that. I don't even a lot of the my financial goals aren't even really for myself it's more for like my family and things like that right mm-hmm. so i think i think when i think of that as a decision I, I think sometimes it plays to a fault because i think sometimes i don't spend on myself and enjoy enough right but i think it's just being understanding what the vision is understanding that even though i want to do this i have to some i'm gonna have to make some sacrifices if i want to hit these numbers of this position that i want to be in right it's i think tanisha says it about closed fists don't like flourish you won't you won't if you're so if you're not going to reinvest into your business and it's all just spending on useless stuff you're never going to get to those extra points because Mm -hmm. you you hit a point where you have to start spending in order to get your business to the next level so that's right that's right so yeah i mean (laughs) and the cool thing about it to see two young guys who are very kind of level-headed is is not the norm right uh you know they especially there where y'all gen z yeah the gen z is that what i I about to say i don't know i know how old i am Uh, i know i'm a gemini gen z the instagram influence he just said he knows he's a gemini 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, because I know it was baby boomers, Gen Z, Gen X, I all this Gemini. stuff. That's cute. Look, I don't really get into that, man. <laughs> right, right. It's technically a 90s baby. Yeah. Is that was what I Yeah, that's what I consider myself. You ain't no 90s baby. What are you, 98? 2000. 2000. Right? Yeah, I'm going to say he's 2000. Crazy. But I'm on the border. That's too crazy. On the border. I had, I had all the, the experiences. I had the little VHS TV and stuff that you slide into the did room. You? Yeah. I don't think you did. Man, really you. Did. What y'all know about Blockbuster before? Man, what you box. what do you know about Blockbuster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, he's 92 though. 92. Look, I, I mean, look, I'm telling you. Yeah, he's 92. And I also can, remember, I'm raised by my grandma, so I know a lot. Okay. I'm Did talk- you ever go to Blockbuster? Do you know? No. I don't oh. even know what Blockbuster. We always drove by it. I never went to it though. Yeah. So Blockbuster was still around. Yeah, it was still. Yeah. yeah. It was going down. I remember where every car had the the CD. You know. Do you remember cassettes? So I'm not there yet. Yeah. I, I wasn't there. there yet. I, I'm, I mean, I mean my there. bad. <laughs> I'm not that far back. I'm okay. 92. I know what it is. My uh-huh. grandma had them, but we weren't really playing them. By the time I was there, it was CDs. Uh, I remember the uh, VHS players. I remember when DVD player came out. Mm-hmm. I remember that. You know, but I don't remember cassette. I don't remember no two ways. You know, I don't, I don't know. remember that either. Now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm I'm not that, that far back. Right. <laughs> See, I caught I caught like the back end of that. By the, yeah. for me, it was like it wasn't till probably end of middle school early high school that i started to get like the phones and all that stuff that's because you weren't old enough i know but i i still <laughs> got changed, i got y'all's right? lifestyle but for that's like true, the first ki- yeah. Seven yeah. to yeah. 10 years <laughs> what, so what, what year did you have your first cell phone uh seventh grade, seventh seventh grade. so grade. seventh grade i was grade, in ninth grade seventh grade so what year is that for you to 2012. 2012. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, you know, you hit the like the twentieth of the month. I, I tell everybody, man, I'm offline until the first of the mm-hmm. month because we got to put more minutes on there. <laughs> uh, I don't remember that, but I I just remember when we just had. To, you remember they had to like uh, everything would be not prepaid, but you know, had the plans. It'd be free after eight. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, sing- yeah. I remember yeah, I had so singular you, before yeah. it was. Yeah, AT&T. singular before it was eighteen. I remember when Metro came out. Okay. Metro PCS. I remember when they came out. Metro, who who owns Metro PCS? Isn't that a? I don't know. Maybe I think it's Sprint. T-Mobile. Oh, T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Yeah, yeah, T-Mobile. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, but y'all act like y'all really remember this. Right, yeah, they over here. <laughs> I think I'm, I was, gonna, I'm gonna give it to Evan because he's only he's thirty two. He's thirty two. I'm telling you, I've seen I've Mr. seen a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, you 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 born in the two thousands, <laughs> man. My my two little brothers older than you, man. Like I got an old soul. That's true. That's true. He that's does. True. He does that's seem true. more. He's way more mature than me when I was twenty four. I tell him that yeah, all the time. He is pretty mature. And I had a kid at twenty four, so I just wasn't that much that mature, you know. Right. How? What? What made y'all get close? I mean, I know y'all were in seals together. And that's how y'all met, right? Yeah, but were y'all like he knows someone I went to college with. I'm not super close with him. I don't know. I think I remember one time you were just like, um, "Hey, let's go get something to eat for lunch." Like we were doing a break for seals out in Frisco. And we had some for eat to um to eat for lunch, maybe at Cowboy. What's it called? Country. What's the Concrete Cowboy? Cowboy. Yeah, Concrete, Concrete. Cowboy. Mm-hmm. And then that was the first really in depth conversation we had. And and from my opinion, I think from there that's how we got pretty close. And we had another agent. He's not here no more. But me and him were pretty close because we're both like we're na- known as the Arlington agents. And then since he lived in Dallas at the time, only twenty minutes out, he would come hang out with us and. Then me and that other agent, we kind of fell off, and then me and him just kept going. I mean, I don't know if you would agree. Yeah, no, nah, I would say the same thing. I think I don't even remember the conversation or how it started, but I just remember we all had the same kind of vision, mm-hmm. the, the three of us. It was me and Tevin and then our other friend, and we all just kind of like it, when it first started, we were all kind of – this is when I was more here frequently. Right. We were all mm-hmm. kind of sitting here. We would plan like, oh, this is – I learned that if I do this, my open houses will get better. I learned if I do this, this will happen. And we, we just kind of all started learning from each other's experiences, I guess. And then I guess just over time, it just kind of stuck around, huh? Yeah, and I think with him and I, we got more closer. I think even if we still had the other guy around, 
Angelo and I probably would be, still be way more closer because our values are almost identical, mm. right? I'm older than him, so he and he's not married or have kids. So, yeah, that's the difference. But other than that, it's pretty much almost identical with, you know, like we had um, we had a seafood boil, I think, last week. You know, and um, oh. and we were actually just talking about <laughs> real estate. We're talking about business, but most importantly, we're talking about God. Like we literally are talking about how we can increase our faith and things like that. Mm. And those are the type of people that I like to hang around with, you know, um, tithing, things like mm. that. That's good. That's good. And one of the things, too, and I think probably the, the biggest thing was a lot of people don't do this, but you all hold each other. Y'all, There's some accountability there. And. You all will have tough conversations. You'll tell somebody, "Hey, look, dude, you you know you said you were gonna do this. Mm-hmm. What's 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 happening?" And yeah, and so talk about that part because I really believe if more people had friends that mm-hmm. could hold them accountable, that you would actually really listen to and be impacted by the fact that they're saying, "Hey, look, dude, you're not living up to the standard, man. This is what we said." Uh, I think that helps propel both. So somebody who's holding you accountable has to stay. Right. straight too, right i can't hold you accountable i'm out here all foul you know what i mean yeah so i think that is a really big determining factor um as to why both of you are very successful and have done it i mean you know most people like we said this 20 percent of the people in this business do 80 percent of the business mm-hmm. so everybody else is just on the fringe or on their way out of the business mm-hmm. that's not you guys you guys are buck that trend you guys come in new you already close, you know, first year you close, uh, you know, 17, 8, 11, whatever houses you do, that's more than what a seasoned person does. And already you've done more this year than you did last year. So it's, it's working, mm-hmm. and I think that accountability piece is very important. So talk on that a little bit about the accountability. You want to go or you want me to go? Uh, I think it's – I think it I think it goes into play like he said. I think we both have just kind of built a friendship beyond just a business relationship. So when we have these tough conversations, it's not as tough cuz I know he's looking out for my best interest and vice versa, right? Even when you know he's struggling and things like that or something happens in his business, I'm able to kind of like speak life and help him help him kind of work through those and he does the same for me and I think it kind of shows, right? I think it it that that's probably the strongest thing is I think we've gotten to a point where we trust each other's character to where mm. he, he can't really tell me much that'll hurt my feelings. He might say something that's like, okay, I needed to hear that. Yeah. But I know that at the end of the day, it's from the right, you know, the right place. Right. It's it's not out of like selfish and amb- selfish ambition or anything like that. It's out of a space of love, like a brother kind of mm-hmm. thing. Really? Sure. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's ever Aww. been a time where we argued. I mean, correct Aww. me if I'm wrong, but you know, um, Sorry. Yeah, I didn't think y'all be arguing. Yeah, yeah I, no, well, y'all not a couple yeah. or nothing like that. No, like, but I'm just saying. I mean, friends argue. Yeah, friends yeah. argue, but I don't think it's every time. Argue. Yes, you can have disagreements, not argue like, oh, we're going to fight. Just, you know, disagreement, like, you know. Well, because me and my big brother, I mean, me and my real brother, we do argue all the time. But but the thing is, is we probably never argue because of our values being so close and because of the respect we have for each other. I mean, he's younger than me, but he's been in the industry longer than me. Mm-hmm. So there has been times, especially in the beginning, where I would pick his brain and say, oh, OK, I didn't really know that. And he's like, oh, yeah, you didn't know that. Like price per square foot. I used to never really care about that. And he would always talk in this type of terminology and it would overwhelm me because I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know. I just placed the <laughs> offer. And he's like, no, I think it's because of this, this. But it actually helped me grow because now I understand how important it is. And I didn't understand how important, you know, knowing about foundation and all these other things were either. I got that from him. And I'm pretty sure he can name some things he got from me. So it's always just a uh, a constant bouncing ideas off each other. And that's how. But also, most importantly, is, is we constantly communicate. I mean, it's been times where we'll go, I don't, maybe it's been a week where we haven't spoke I think the longest, in my opinion, huh? this is a real relationship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, <laughs> no, it's yeah, you know, they don't but, argue. So, they communicate so, so, all the time. It's a bromance. They yeah. keep each other accountable. I love it. Well, I mean, bromance. because I think I in real it. estate, you know, when I'm talking to newer agents and they ask for my advice and all this and that, I give them the t- you know the tea on this placing offers and stuff like that. But when it comes down to it, I do really, really emphasize having someone, at least one person that you can go to to complain with. Yeah. And then maybe having another person, if it's not that same person, that you can go to to just pick their brain 
or whatever it may be. And I never, even though I'm older than him, I've never looked at it like, oh, I know more than you. And I think even though, you know, he has more experience than me, he's never looked at it like, oh, I know more than mm-hmm. you. Right. And I think that's what makes it work, you know, uh, because um, we we know we respect each other's goals, even though they that's probably the only difference we have is we have different goals. But whatever he tells me his goals are, I'm like, okay, cool. Well, if you're going to get it, this is what you got to do. Right. And then he said the same thing for me. This is what you got to do. <laughs> gotcha. I think I think our visions are similar, too, and I think that's been a big thing. I think we both kind of align with, like, I guess for sure our belief systems, right, and the way we process things. But I think, like, it's not one of those things where, like, he's wanting to go out and club every night and or vice versa. I'm wanting to go out and club every night, and he's going home to his family. It's one of those things that we both have a vision of, we want to get to these goals and we want to be better next year than we were this Mm -hmm. year. And I think the fact that that's like our main motive, any, I mean, we talked about it with him uh, filtering through people. A lot of the great people I've met through monument has been through his filtration process. Cause he, (laughs) he meets four or five people. He'll filter through them and then he'll tell me somebody that he really trusts their judgment. A month, two months later, I end up having a conversation with that person, and every single time, they've been very impactful to take me to the next level. That's right. been happening a lot lately. It's you know, every so yeah, it's everything. That's I good. Just, yeah. I, just, I just got a great eye, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let me let me do this though, because we we need to wrap. But uh, what are the goals for? I know y'all, and you don't have to. If it's personal, and you don't want to have to to share. But what's so what's what's next? Mm-hmm. What what is your what's the goal moving forward? You've already accomplished things, but I'm sure you have a a big goal for uh, moving forward the rest of the year or next year. What 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 do you have? What's in store? Well, for me, um, I've been blessed to close multiple deals monthly uh, lately. And you're right, I've already exceeded my goal. Did, well. The production I had in 2023, I've already exceeded that. Um, so I wanted to triple it this year, and I am on pace for doing that. Triple it in the form of, of GCI, also in the form of quantity, and then also in the form of um, the amount, I guess you can Sales say. Sales volume. Yeah, volume. Yeah, mm-hmm. volume. Volume. Um, a lot of my business in the beginning was buyer heavy, so do want to, you know, I say flatten out a little bit, have more balance and have more listings also. So that's, and I, I think the environment I created around me along with hiring a coach, um, you know, not really being a part of just the, the typical environment, I guess you can say that real estate agents are a part of, I don't do a lot of networking events and things like that. Cause I'm so focused. Um, so that does help tremendously. So that's my goals for uh, 2024. And I only work on, either one year at a time or one month at a time. So I have yearly goals, but also have monthly goals. And so that's just for the rest of this year. I like it. I like it. What about you, Angel? So for me, I think I think the biggest thing I'm trying to learn now is uh, consistency. I think I've I have I think it comes from my sales background actually. Uh Dee Walton was help, shout out to Dee because she was helping me realize this. Uh, I have these sporadic months where I have a really good month and then I go slow for two months and I have a really good month and I go slow for two months. But I was talking to Dee and she was saying that it's it's because of the sales thing, right? Sales, you have a really good weekend and then Monday through Friday, you just relax, right? So I'm trying to build consistency is my kind of thing. I want to double my volume or triple my volume, but do it from an aspect of I constantly have the money flowing in. I constantly... I'm doing the things that I need to do. So I think that's kind of the trajectory. I'm trying to smooth out the peaks and valleys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's like now I, from a financial perspective, I don't stress out as much, but it's, there's still the peaks Mm -hmm. and valleys Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to just get it to stay flatlined throughout just the entire year and just consistent, consistent, just be consistent with that. So. Cool. Well, since you guys are here and if people have listened to you and think, okay, I think I'd like to work with that little dude with the, the LeBron jersey <laughs> on or they want to work with uh, Angelo, why don't y'all let them know how they can reach you and, uh, and, 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 and get with you about purchasing or selling or whatever. Yeah, on all social media platforms, I'm close with Tevin. Uh, Tevin is spelled just like Tevin Campbell. Can we talk? <laughs> Um, and then if you want to just go, you should, you, you know should, what? oh my gosh, you gotta you put should. the that can we talk needs to be you part do. of the time. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. yeah, put that on the tagline. Yeah. yeah, but but um, <laughs> if you want to just go to my website to get like a consultation and and a home evaluation things like that, or 
Uh, that's TevinRogers.com. Okay. TevinRogers.com. All right. Can we talk? For me, the best place to connect would probably be Instagram. That's that's the most frequent social media that I'm on. I mean, if you want my contact information and stuff, I have all the links and like my link tree, and you can get all the other information and websites and all that stuff. But for the most part, just connecting on Instagram would probably be the easiest way to kind of. Where just do we go on Instagram? Oh, uh, I am Angelo Chavez. So I am first name last name. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Well, very good, okay, guys. This the bros good. of real estate. Yeah. One last question. Was it, uh, I guess the, the battle is over now, but who did you have? Was it Kendrick or did you do? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, me, Drake? I like both of them, but anybody that knows me personally know how big of a Kendrick fan I am. I can see that. Yeah. So okay. I think I think he got it, especially with the not like us. I still crib walk to that, even though <laughs> crib walk. even though I'm not I'm Coast? not doing that. Nah, uh-huh. man, you know when you play that song, man, you yeah. just feel like like you feel like you can. Like, I'm about it, you yeah. know. Yeah. I ain't gonna do it in the Cali though, you know, because I ain't about that I life. Don't do that. Uh, I choose J Cole. Okay. Oh, I, like Cole. That. I like I that. I like that. Choose J Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out all right (laughs) well y'all this has been a great episode we appreciate you all popping in and Mm -hmm. sharing your stories hopefully this helps others who are thinking about coming into the industry and also help those who want to make home ownership a reality or somebody who needs to sell a house these are two great agents right here so and obviously Benita's a great agent too we i I don't want to forget Benita (laughs) and marcella's a great agent we got all it's all real estate agents (laughs) here marcella's a real estate agent so we got plenty of people who can help you uh like i said like subscribe do all that stuff whatever you're supposed to do yeah. uh share <laughs> uh ahead. the the podcast so that we can get uh you know make sure people get to hear this story so y'all have a great one we appreciate it and we'll see you next time mm-hmm.